Good evening, it's 8.15pm on Monday the 4th of March and this is the 26th of 53 consecutive five mile walks from the Gresford Disaster Memorial to the Miner's Rescue and back again. Yesterday we covered the announcement that the inquiry into the Gresford Colliery disaster would begin at Church House Regent Street on October the 25th and we met Sir Stafford Cripps who would go on to be a seriously big hitter in the world of domestic politics and international diplomacy. He would be representing the North Wales Miners Association, who in turn represented the miners. As well as Cripps, there are four other principal players in the scene about to unfold. Representing the Dennis family, the owners of the mine, was Sir Hartley Shawcross, a graduate of the London School of Economics and a senior trial lawyer. In 1945, he would be knighted and become a Labour MP for St Helens, taking on roles such as the Attorney General and lead British prosecutor at the Nuremberg War Trials. He and Cripps were both young, hungry lawyers aiming to make their marks in the highest offices of power. Our next key player is Henry Dyke Dennis, born to Cornish parents in Ruab and Wrexham in 1863. Following in the father's footsteps, Dennis became a mining engineer, and when the Gresford pit had been sunk in 1911, Dennis was pit owner, in control of one of the deepest pits on the Denbyshire coalfield, with a workforce of nearly 2,000 miners. Our penultimate player is William Bonzel, the pit manager at Gresford at the time of the disaster, having been appointed to the position in 1917, following three years as deputy manager. Previous to this, he had worked in the mines of Derbyshire, becoming an overman, supervising the extraction of coal and enforcing safety standards, and under manager. And finally, there's Sir Henry Walker, a Yorkshire man and experienced mine inspector, who'd been active in a number of inquiries investigating some of the worst mining disasters of the period. At the time of the inquiry, he held the position of Chief Inspector of Mines. His job would be to manage the inquiry in a highly charged, overcrowded atmosphere. There was no long wait between tragedy and inquiry, like we've witnessed in recent COVID inquiries. On the contrary, this inquiry would take place a mere four weeks after the disaster. No time at all for raw emotions to subside. If you take a look at the link to the YouTube Pathé film I've included in this thread, you'll see footage of crowds of miners jostling to gain entry to the proceedings inside Church House. Church House proved to be a wholly inadequate venue and could barely accommodate officials, witnesses, miners, various representatives, the press and interested members of the local community. After three weeks, it was transferred to the ballroom of a local hotel, which was even more restricted in terms of space. The venues chosen did nothing to keep a potentially explosive inquiry from simmering over into ill temper and recrimination. And so the scene is set and the key players have taken their positions. Tomorrow we enter the doors of the inquiry and we begin to understand the reasons about why and how this tragedy happened. This walk was dedicated to George Llewellyn Jones, Gwilym Jones, Henry Jones, Idris Jones, and Yorath Jones. Tonight's song is Mystery of Iniquity by Lauren Hill. <laughs> 